I've tried to make this video for a while. I record it, I edit it, and then I don't release it, I delete it. I'm gonna talk about it this time. My big concern is always like, well, why am I putting myself out there like that? Kind of envious of the younger generation that grew up around social media and doesn't really care to put themselves out there. I worry about what if a potential employer sees it? What if my friends see it? And the truth is, if you're one of my friends, you probably already know most of my life story because I don't have a big circle of friends and I don't really care what people think about me. And the small circle of friends that I do still talk to probably know all this stuff already because I've never kept this stuff a secret. I don't want to try to glorify this or glamorize drugs or make this sound cool because it's not cool. I'm actually really ashamed of it. I just turned 37 years old and it's the first birthday that I've celebrated where I've been sober in over 20 years. It's funny because I, I, I wrote all this stuff down because there's so many details that I, I didn't want to forget and in one of the previous videos where I tried to talk about this stuff I I tried to like read a script. You can't really go off a script when you're trying to talk about stuff that's this personal. I guess I'll try to use that as a guide so I don't get sidetracked. I started doing drugs at a very young age. Um, I was actually in the womb. <laughs> I was uh, drinking and doing drugs. Uh, once my mom found out she was pregnant with me, she did stop and she she did her best to, to raise me. But she also struggled with addiction throughout my childhood, which, you know, I can point blame, um, but she did the best that she could and I appreciate her for it because I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for her. And she's made decisions and sacrifices in her life that helped me out a lot. And I have to appreciate that, um, even if my childhood sucked. I remember being eight or nine years old, stealing cigarettes from her and taking sips of her adult beverage when she wasn't looking. And I remember running around with that pack of like dirty little ghetto kids. That we were a bunch of little hoodlums. We would pick up cigarette butts off the ground and smoke them and try to pretend to be cool and be older. And, and that kind of mentality set me up for failure. And that kind of mentality, uh, stuck for a while, for, for a long while. I did acid when I was probably like 11 years old. I did cocaine for the first time when I was like 12 or 13. When I got into my early teenage years, like 14 and 15, I was drinking almost every day. We would stand outside of the corner store asking people to buy us cigarettes and alcohol. I remember that a few of my friends caught a charge for beating someone up who refused to buy them alcohol and cigarettes one day and they were all like 14 and 15 and 13 years old and I'm just lucky I wasn't there that day because I'm sure that would have been the first charge that I would have caught. My first time getting arrested didn't happen until a few years after that but we would drink, we would smoke cigarettes, we would smoke weed. I remember huffing glue and huffing paint when I was really young as well. As I got older drugs and alcohol just remained part of my life throughout my whole adult life. It's crazy to think that you know for for such a long time, drugs and alcohol have been a part of my life. It's weird because I've always been able to hold down a job and maybe that's the only thing that really saved me in the long run. But I do remember breaking into cars, stealing bikes, stealing cars, and doing stuff like that just to make a little bit of money to buy more drugs and more alcohol. And I also sold drugs for a while too when I was younger. Um, luckily, I didn't stay involved in that for too long, mostly because I got arrested a bunch of times. And when I first moved to Vegas, I was 17 years old, just about to turn 18. I'd been arrested four times and trouble always seems to find trouble. And I found the wrong crowd again and I was back right into the same shit that I was involved with in Miami. And I would still drink and do all kinds of drugs. Once I got into my early 20s, I was mostly drinking and smoking weed. I've smoked a lot of weed and I've drank a lot. I, weed has always been like my crutch. It's always the not so bad drug, the one that always kind of sticks around because it's, you know, not as serious as other drugs and it's not as bad as alcohol and all that stuff. And, and alcohol has always been like a, a big part of my habits. And through my early 20s, um, I drank a lot a lot, like every single day I drank. And it wasn't like the fun drinking where you go out with your friends, although I, of course I did that, but it was a lot of like at home drinking and it was a lot of drinking and playing video games um, by myself and smoking weed by myself. That was my life for like from 20 to 20, 28. So for those eight years of my life, it was pretty much just a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, a lot of video games and a whole lot of nothing else. Around the time I turned 28, I, I kind of started to change a little bit. I started to get more motivated. 
and wanted to start like cutting back on a lot of the bad stuff that I was doing. I found jujitsu. That really helped me. It was one of the healthiest things I, I ever got addicted to. Uh, I used to work out, but I was never addicted to working out. I know that there's a lot of people who, who get off of substances and get out of one addiction and replace it with a healthy addiction. And you see people who get hooked on fitness, get hooked on running. They get hooked on something positive to replace that negative addiction. And um, But the loop is still kind of the same. At, at least that's what I've noticed. And so by the time I did start training jujitsu, I was already in the mindset of wanting to let go of some of that other stuff. And then I just smoked weed all day long, every single day. From sunup to sundown, I was that guy who just smoked a shit ton of weed all the time. Through both of my wife's pregnancies, while I was learning how to code, I was, I was just, I was a stoner. And um, I've been a stoner for, <laughs> for my whole life, I guess. But, but uh, I, I replaced everything else with weed. And then I would like just drink on the weekends or special occasions. But it's funny how like when you, when you like drinking and you like being fucked up, you, um, you find ways to make every occasion a special occasion. And I guess that's, that's why this, this last weekend for me was really, really hard and probably the biggest step for me in the right direction that I've ever made. And it, it was, it was difficult. I really wanted to drink and I, and I, and I wanted to have fun on my birthday. And I always associate having fun with, with drinking and smoking weed and, and doing drugs. I didn't do it and it felt really, really good. It's, it's a big win for me because I, I almost relapsed and I've only been sober for like two months now. And I, I've, I've gone through other times in my life where I've, tried to get sober or, you know, just not smoke weed and, and drink. And, um, I've kind of always failed. Um, many of the times if I did stop smoking weed, it was usually to get a job and pass a drug test. And then I would just drink a lot. And then once I got the job, I would start smoking weed again and I wouldn't drink as much. And the one other time that I tried to get sober was last year during coronavirus when um, we went on lockdown and I started going to therapy. I, I thought that, that I was ready then, but I wasn't. I, I went for like four months. I wanted to do it, but I wasn't that serious about it. I don't know. I thought it was the right thing to do and I was doing it for the sake of thinking it was the right thing to do and not because I actually wanted to do it. I struggled more quitting weed than I, I did quitting cigarettes and and luckily I was already not drinking that much um, recently when I decided to stop you know and get sober from everything and um, it's just been tough it's been a, a tough couple months uh, my mood's a lot better now I, I feel like my sleep's a lot better and I feel like I'm on the right track and I feel like this this big victory for me for not drinking or smoking any weed on my birthday was huge and it lets me know that I'm gonna do it this time um, why am I making this video I don't know I don't know I, I've I guess I'm a youtuber now and, and that's what youtubers do we talk about shit we talk about our personal life or at least that's what I always thought YouTube was about I, I know that it's all about selling people shit now and it's all about building a brand and that's not what I want to do anymore. I mean, I've, I've been talking about that for a while now and I, I figured I have a small platform, but I know that there's people out there that watch these videos that could probably benefit from me talking about this stuff because I wish that when I was younger and I was struggling with a lot of this stuff, there were people talking about it. And you know, I got to give kudos to the younger generation because this younger generation is a little more open to talking about things like anxiety and depression and addiction than my generation was um, and the older generation is. I think that's a good thing. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think the younger generation is a little soft, but still nice to know that we're changing in a positive way. And I figured that I want to be part of that positive change and I want to talk about my my struggles because it, if it does help somebody, then then good. If this video doesn't get any views, I don't care. I, 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 I make videos. Um, and all I care about is, is how many views the video gets. And I'll probably care a little bit about this one, but I'm going to try not to. And I want to talk about other shit. I've, I've talked about a lot of stuff recently that has been a little bit more personal. Um, I know everybody's like got me on suicide watch and I, I don't want to joke around with suicide cause that stuff's serious, but I'm not doing that bad. I'm actually 
in one of the best places I've been in my life and both mentally, physically, actually physically, I need to lose a little weight because I've, I've gained a few pounds over the last couple years, but just overall, I'm in a really good spot. I have a beautiful family. I have a great job. I have a lot of things that I never thought I would have and I'm, I'm good and I'm trying to not keep myself numb you know, with weed and, and drinking all the time because I feel like I don't, I don't know who I am because I've never been sober long enough to know my real self. And because of weed and drinking for so long, I guess that's been associated with part of my personality. And I was that guy, you know, a lot of, a lot of people would joke about it, but I, um, when I decided to quit, uh, you know, a couple months ago, I threw away hundreds of dollars of smoking paraphernalia and weed and oils and, and vape cartridges and just all kinds of stuff, edibles. I, I dumped it all in the trash. And I just, I don't know, I got, I got upset with myself. I, I don't want to be a stoner dad. I don't want to, I don't want that to define who I am. I don't want that to, I don't want to be that person anymore. And I want to be me. <laughs> I want to be myself, and um, I'm just trying to find who that person is without drugs and alcohol. And uh, you know, he's 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 an alright guy. He's 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 not bad. Even though I associated a lot of my personality with those things, I've noticed that my personality is still the same. Just I'm just not high all the time. <laughs> it's kind of weird because you do associate your personality with those things, and other people do because. They just know you as that person who just smokes weed all the time. And a lot of my friends are, are, are stoners too. And luckily I don't see a lot of them anymore because most of those friends are in Vegas. And the people I know in Washington mostly drink. For me, it's a lot easier to not drink than to not smoke. But I realized through the last couple of months that I just want a head change whenever I can get one. And I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just, I want to drink and smoke and do all the drugs because I'm trying not to. And it's just my brain being stuck within those same neurological pathways that it, that I've made over the last 20 years of doing those things that has me convinced that I need them. And I realize that I don't, and I realize that I'm a lot better without it. And I don't know, this is, this is going off on a, on in a totally different direction, but the whole point that I wanted to get across was, was, um, it's all right to struggle. It's, it's okay. It's as long as you, you realize where you're at in life and where you want to be and what you actually want to do and the things that are stopping you from doing it and trying to make that change and trying to get away from all those things that are making you live a life you don't really want to be living and, you know, knowing what you need to do to move in the right direction and knowing what things you need to eliminate or what things you need to add to your life in order for you to stay on track and in order for you to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish and be the person that you want to be and be happy and whatever, like, like do it, like do it, just, just do it and know that a lot of people that are struggling don't want to talk about this stuff because I don't, I don't want to talk about this. I, I am ashamed of it and it's hard for me to discuss these things. It's weird. It's weird. And then what do I do? I fucking turn on a camera and start talking about it to, to anyone who can see on the internet, which is just, I, I don't know. But I guess, you know, if I'm going to be a YouTuber, I, I might as well talk about my feelings and my personal life because isn't that what YouTubers are supposed to do? I don't know. <sighs> yeah. So I hope that I am actually able to release this one. I hope that I am able to, to get through editing this whole video and actually put it out there. Because like I said, I've probably made this video over 10 times already before and I just edit it and, and I can't, I can't release it because it's so damn personal and I'm so worried about what people will think. And I realized that I don't know most of you, so I don't care. And my biggest concern is like an employer watching it. And honestly, if they're going to hold me trying to improve my life and not do drugs and alcohol anymore against me for a job, then fuck them. It's not a job I want to work. And with my resume right now and how many recruiters contact me on a regular basis, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to have a hard time finding a job. So whatever.
All right, hopefully this helps somebody. Hopefully if you're struggling through similar things, like, like go get help if you need it. Um, that's one thing that I had to realize that when I needed help, I had to go get it. And um, don't, don't be ashamed, you know? People, people aren't gonna make fun of you for it. You're, you're better for it. And um, you'll get through it. Yeah, because I'm getting through it. And it's honestly a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. And I don't know what I'm gonna continue to talk about on this channel. I, I, I'm all over the place right now. But this is something that I wanted to, to get out there and I hope it helps someone. Um, all right, thanks for watching. See you next time.